Welcome back, everyone. On today's episode of Duty and Valor, you'll hear the story of a man who volunteered for military service after the U.S. entered World War I. A man who feared no man or machine while flying in combat. A man whose independent spirit defined his short but legendary flying career. This is the story of Medal of Honor recipient U.S. Army Air Service 2nd Lieutenant Frank Luke Jr. Frank Jr. was born to parents Tilly and Frank Sr. on May 19, 1897 in Phoenix, Arizona. His parents, who had immigrated from Germany, had nine children in total, and Frank Jr. was the fifth oldest. The rough life in early 20th century Phoenix helped shape Frank's tough and independent nature. In high school, he excelled in sports and was an avid horseman and hunter. Following his graduation from Phoenix Union High School, he found employment in a copper mine. And when not at work, he fought in bare-knuckle boxing matches and taught dancing. After the U.S. entered World War I in April 1917, Frank enlisted in the aviation section of the U.S. Army Air Corps five months later on September 25th. He attended ground flight training at the University of Texas' School of Military Aeronautics and then received flight training at Rockwell Field in San Diego, California. Upon completion of flight training in January 1918, he received his wings and a commission in the U.S. Army as second lieutenant. He then found himself on a ship headed to Europe, and he eventually landed in France and was assigned to the 3rd Aviation Instruction Center for additional training, which he completed in May of that year. Lieutenant Luke was assigned to the 1st Pursuit Group's 27th U.S. Aero Squadron. He was assigned a French SPAD-13 and would fly this type of aircraft during his time in combat. When Lieutenant Luke got to his squadron, his independent nature bumped into Captain Alfred Grant, his commander. One quote written about their conflict says that, quote, Some people go by the book and others write the book, unquote. What many would soon learn is that Lieutenant Luke was the one writing the book on World War I aviation. Lieutenant Luke's first aerial combat was on August 16, 1918, and it didn't start off well. When the rest of his flight took off, his SPAD-13 wasn't ready, forcing him to take off much later than the other men. He eventually got his plane in the air and flew to join his flight near the front lines. When he returned to his aerodrome much later than the other planes, his SPAD was damaged and full of bullet holes. He claimed to have downed a German Fokker, but many didn't believe him, especially Captain Grant. The only man who did believe him was First Lieutenant Joseph Wenner. Lieutenant Luke and Wenner were said to be inseparable from that point on. The 27th Aero Squadron's main role was to target and eliminate enemy observation balloons, which were primarily used as observation platforms. Though the balloons were well defended from the ground with anti-aircraft guns and from the air by enemy fighters, Lieutenant Luke had an innate ability to wreak havoc on them. From September 12th to 15th, Lieutenant Luke was credited with downing eight of these balloons, earning him his first Distinguished Service Cross. This was the start of a legend, a combat pilot nicknamed the Arizona Balloon Buster. Days later, on September 18th, Lieutenant Luke again distinguished himself. That day, he and Lieutenant Wenner were tasked with spotting and destroying observation balloons. Lieutenant Luke destroyed two balloons while Lieutenant Wenner provided cover. Soon after, both men were attacked by a large formation of German planes. Lieutenant Luke turned his spat around and engaged the two closest enemy planes, shooting them both down. Though very low on fuel, he spotted a third plane and attacked it, destroying that one as well. The two balloons and three aircraft were all downed over a 10-minute period, and during this engagement, Lieutenant Luke lost sight of Lieutenant Wenner. He returned to a squadron, but Lieutenant Wenner never returned. It was later discovered that Lieutenant Wenner was shot down by Lieutenant George von Hantelmann, the deadly German fighter ace, credited with at least 25 aerial victories. For his actions that day, Lieutenant Luke was awarded a second Distinguished Service Cross though this one would eventually be awarded posthumously. The death of Lieutenant Wenner, his only close friend, deeply affected Lieutenant Luke. 
Over the next few days, he flew whenever he wanted and was absent without leave on occasion. Seeing that Lieutenant Luke wasn't doing well, he was ordered to take a five-day leave. He returned to his unit on September 25th and flew the very next day. He was still having conflict with Captain Grant and continued to take off without authorization. On September 28th, he took off alone and shot down two more aircraft before landing at a French aerodrome. There he claimed to have engine trouble, though he might have just needed a respite from the encounters with Captain Grant. Lieutenant Luke ended up staying the night at the French base, which ended up being his last night alive. Early in the morning on September 29th, Lieutenant Luke flew back to his base where he was immediately reprimanded by Captain Grant, who also grounded Lieutenant Luke indefinitely. As you might have expected, Lieutenant Luke was angry and decided not to heed the captain's order. He boarded his SPAD-13 and flew to another American base at Verdun. Upon landing, Lieutenant Luke was immediately arrested on Captain Grant's orders. Soon after, Major Harold Hartney, who knew Luke well, landed at Verdun. Lieutenant Luke asked the Major for permission to attack three enemy observation balloons that were spotted nearby. He was granted permission to do so, and he soon took off. That evening, Lieutenant Luke engaged the three balloons six miles behind the German lines, downing all of them. During his attack, none of the reported eight enemy aerial pursuers were able to bring him down. But unfortunately, a hilltop German machine gun took aim at his plane and one round hit Lieutenant Luke by his right shoulder, passing clear through his body, exiting his left side. Due to his wound, he was getting weaker by the moment, which forced his decision to land. While looking for a landing spot, he strafed German soldiers positioned nearby, reportedly killing six and wounding as many more. Lieutenant Luke eventually put his plane down in a field near the village of Mervaux, but he was surrounded on all sides by enemy infantry. After climbing out of his aircraft, he attempted to make an escape by heading to a nearby stream, but he fell dead soon after. Lieutenant Luke's body was retrieved by the Germans and he was buried the next day in a local cemetery. Two months later, American forces reinterred him at the Meuse-Argonne Cemetery and Memorial. Lieutenant Frank Luke Jr.'s combat flying career was a brief but remarkable one. From August 16th to September 30th, 1918, he was credited with downing 14 balloons and 4 aircraft. His 18 confirmed aerial victories were the most up to that point in the war, though he would later be passed by the legendary Captain Eddie Rickenbacker and his 26 victories. In writing about Lieutenant Luke, Captain Rickenbacker said that, quote, He was the most daring aviator and greatest fighter pilot of the entire war. No other ace ever came close to Luke's achievements." For his actions on September 29th, Lieutenant Frank Luke Jr. was promoted to first lieutenant and posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. His legacy remains today. The U.S. Army Air Corps renamed Litchfield Park Field to Luke Field, now known as Luke Air Force Base, on June 6, 1941. In a fitting tribute to the legend of the Arizona Balloon Buster, on February 4, 2023, F-22 Raptors with the call signs Luke-01 and Luke-02 were sent to shoot down a Chinese spy balloon once it was over the Atlantic Ocean. The aircraft were part of the 27th Fighter Group, which is descended from Lt. Luke's 27th Aero Squadron. Lt. Frank Luke Jr. exemplifies the epitome of courage, determination, and selflessness. Luke's relentless pursuit of excellence and his willingness to sacrifice for the greater good embody the very essence of heroism, and he will forever be remembered as a true American hero whose courage continues to inspire American pilots. Thank you for listening to this episode of Duty and Valor. To read more about this week's hero, check out the sources used in today's episode in our show notes and at dutyandvalor.com. If you want to listen to our episodes early, we release new episodes on our YouTube channel of the same name on Fridays at 5 p.m. Also on our channel, we release daily YouTube shorts that highlight our nation's heroes, most of whom haven't been featured on our show yet. Be sure to like, follow, and share our episodes. And please join us for our next episode where we'll be sharing the inspiring story of another American hero who served with pride and lived with humility.